Will Ospreay is a cheat code. Will, go have one of the best matches all year. Yes, sir. Done. We've been putting over Will Ospreay very, very big, but this was Swerve's greatest performance in AEW. Whatever you thought about the rest of the show, maybe disappointed with this or that or Heat or whatever, this main event was just absolutely, completely fantastic. It was a five and a half hour show. That's way too long. I would not say this was a show filled top to bottom with great matches. Although the main event was one of the best matches of the year. Yes. I think we can all safely say that. For this particular crowd, you could tell AEW had not done a good job establishing the outsiders as major names. Because for the most part, they were not into the Japanese wrestlers and the luchadors. I love Hechicero, mm -hmm. but he was not beating MJF. No. They did this match 10,000 times. MJF goes 10,000 and oh. Yes. Yeah. They continue the tease for Bill E. Gunn versus Okada. But the more of Okada that we see, the less surprised I am that we're going to get this match. He's in there doing basic American pro wrestling. Yes. He gives it about 30%, <laughs> except when he needs to. This match was awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely awesome. Second best match on the show, though. Tony Storm versus Mina Shirakawa. The long-awaited conclusion to whatever the hell this, this is. This was not the conclusion. And they do the most dramatic hug ever. And then they do a three-way kiss. And of course the place went wild because the three of them kissed. And they walk backstage. One can only assume for a lesbian orgy. I guess. That is apparently how this all resolves. But as far as like the story of like all of this, I know. But this has not been my favorite story. It has been a couple of hours now, Brian. Have you got any news? Is everyone still alive? I've heard nothing about anyone being dead, so that's a good sign. That makes me happy. I thought Dante Martin broke his leg again. And then a minute later, I thought Mark Briscoe broke his leg exactly like Adam Colton broke his leg. Mm -hmm. I thought they were broken backs and necks all over the place. Guys are going through ladders. I don't know how much they were into Stephanie Vercoeur when she came out. But once she started to wrestle, she did a better job than any of the outsiders of getting the fans into her match. I thought she was the better worker in the match. That's I thought I agree. she did a really, really she good job here. Great. Britt Baker, DMD, makes a return. For every second that she has been gone, I believe she's doing sit-ups. She is shredded. She is absolutely chiseled. Yes. Looks like a bazillion dollars. And they have a stare down. And Britt walks to the back. And that's it. And now that already feels like a mega dream match. Man, I went online and people hated this match. Really? I mean, there were people calling this the worst match on the show, said Nidal looked terrible, huh. said it was in slow motion and it sucked. Well, that's basically a cheat code. Will, go have one of the best matches all year. Yes, sir. Done. Listen, the review of the match is Will Ospreay had his monthly match of the year. Dave jokes about it, but like he talks about, you know, for rest for the match of the year, it should be like match of the year and match of the year not involving Will Ospreay. Yeah. I just said the same thing. He says it as a joke, but, like, it's actually true. I mean, we've been putting over Will Ospreay very, very big, but this was Swerve's greatest performance in AEW. Whatever you thought about the rest of the show, maybe disappointed with this or that or heat or whatever, this main event was just absolutely, completely fantastic. Okay, can everyone hear it? Yeah. There, there is a mystery bell. At Granny's house. She can't hear it. Take off your headphones for a second. I had them on wrong anyway. Take them off and listen. You have your elbow? Is the fan on her computer? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a neighbor that's an ice cream man? <laughs> no. Practicing out there? I got a neighbor that smokes marijuana. <laughs> I'm sure you do. I guess Whatever that noise is, I mean, it's still going. Yeah, it's not going to stop, dude. Brian, do you want me to get off here and go see if the, open the door and see if there's anything out there? Kidding, something's out the front door? If it's Can't death, be. don't open the door. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> this person thinks it's a stove timer. Have you burned the roast? No, I don't have a stove. <laughs> you want me to just get off here? No. You're going to barrel through it. I'd love it. <laughs> You're not even doing anything. <laughs> uh, Granny, uh, Nick says that you've got a, an old-fashioned analog alarm clock in Terry's bedroom. I don't know. I got a new alarm clock. Oh. Battery operated. Is that what she meant? 
Well, whatever it is, it's going haywire right now. Oh, it might be my alarm. <laughs> you think? <laughs> but it's way back in the bedroom. Solve the mystery. Is there a reason you didn't turn it off when it started ringing? Well, I wasn't in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I didn't Duh. Know. I, I took I took a nap. I took a nap and set the alarm. I thought I shut it off, but I probably didn't. No, you probably didn't. I, that's life I, I would say with a good deal of certainty that you didn't turn it off. Brian, that's life around here. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm well aware. I do the show with Dave too. Say, I hear all sorts of things in the background. Did I do that? I wake up and I see lights on, and I say, I didn't turn those lights on. What's going Maybe on? Maybe the place is haunted. <laughs> Could be. Okay. It's my brain that's haunted. <laughs> well, I hope not. Do you have neighbors? Yeah. yeah has anyone started shooting the windows yet? <laughs> oh, they're far away. All right. And busy smoking pot. That's right. <laughs> they're busy with that weed. You guys don't get this Okada thing. He's Shinsuke Nakamura when he came to America. He beat the fuck out of himself for years. And now he's making seven figures, taking no bumps breaking no sweats, and having the fucking time of his life, and I couldn't be happier for the guy. Tony Schiavone brings out his good friend, Britt Baker. Jesus Christ, look at this woman. She is shredded. You know, she talks about the mini stroke that she had. That was in November, and it's currently July. And, you know, they, I'm sure, had to do all sorts of stuff to make sure that she was okay. But, I mean, basically, in terms of, like, living a normal life, I mean... She's been, like, good to go for a long time. And so, literally, she just, I guess, has sat at home and trained and watched her diet. He claimed that I couldn't bring myself to do the Tiger Driver. That's not what happened. This is total gaslighting here. He was so excited to do that Tiger Driver on Sunday. He hooked the guy. He looked right into the camera, and he goes... Tiger Driver! And he went for it and got countered. Not only is he doing this gimmick, but now he's, like, changed his voice. Is he, this fucker making fun of me about 15 years ago? I, I, I I'll be pretty pissed off if that's the case. It does seem like a more excited version of Chris Jericho. He's doing a high-pitched Kermit version of himself. <laughs> if the wrestling business right now was doing as well as the wrestling business was doing in the 90s, I would have a gold boat. Wildcard has new music, but the crowd immediately cracks the code and cheers. It is, in fact, Hangman hey Adam Page. Suddenly, it's a brand new Jeff Jarrett out there. Well, here he feels like a living legend. They believe that he wasn't as good as he once was, but once he could be as good as he ever was. But he wasn't. <laughs> but God damn, this was a great dramatic match. And I know if you're a hardcore AEW fan, you don't want to hear this. You hate it. You want to see Will Ospreay have a banger on every single show. But for AEW, for Will Ospreay, for Tony Khan, he should not be going 50-50 with Daniel Garcia. I know they've been building him up and saying he's the backbone of the company, but we've all been watching the show. He hasn't beat anybody of note in this build. The MGF turn, I mean, they got a bunch of baby faces now, so he doesn't need to be the top baby face. The only problem is... Now we have what with Adam Cole? That feud's done. Yeah. So I don't know what Adam Cole's coming back for now. I, I, so I, that's why I thought the timing of this was odd. I think his contract is coming due soon as well. Hmm. If he resigns, then he's going to return, you know, probably around all out, all in, and uh, do whatever he's going to do. And if he does not resign, well, this was his swan song. Vic Joseph says there are four calm competitors in the ring the same is not going to be said for the contract signing and i said what and i rewound it and i listened very closely i turned my computer volume all the way up there are four calm competitors in the ring and i said no that can't be right i rewound it and vic joseph said why do you torture yourself there are four calm competitors in the ring i said no no my speakers are let me turn on closed captioning closed captioning said there are four strong competitors in the ring which would be much much better Except the saying, that won't be the case in the main event later. <laughs> so yes, these men in this wrestling match are calm. I have a buddy there, and we're always arguing about NXT. And I've been going on and on for weeks now about how shitty this Javon Evans booking is. 
And a couple of weeks ago, they were like, yeah, you bitch every week, but the numbers just keep growing. I screenshotted it. Hmm. And uh, last week they dropped, and then this week they dropped. And I pointed out it's, it's you know, two weeks of decline in a row since you guys beat Javon. You had him win that battle royal, and you beat him. And then you beat him and beat him. Now it's a four-way nobody cares about. When you had a match, people would have cared about. And so they sent me a screenshot of Dave saying you can disregard this number because it's July 2nd. Two days before the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's your excuse? It was You're agreeing with Dave that it was two days before 4th of July so you can throw it out? Well, then the dynamite rating comes in, and guess what? Fucking dynamite rating's just fine on July 3rd. Hmm. So don't give me this shit about July 2nd. Everyone's performance here was very good. Trick was good. Sean was good. Ethan was good. Javon Evans was really good. As he continues to just blow me away with every segment he's on. His fucking Javon is amazing. He is the star of the segment. Why is it a four-way? You don't trust these two guys to have a good match? Well, what's the one guy champion for then if he can't have a good match? You realize that this Javon's actually been wrestling for years and he can have a good match with Trick? You don't have to put two veterans in there? Not to mention... Trick and Javon are baby faces. So is the idea that you're going to put two heels in with them in a show in Toronto where the two heels are from Toronto? Mm. This booking of this main event, everything about this main event is just such a fail. And thank God it's all over Sunday and we can just start over again and try doing things right.